everyone. Today we're going to look at respiratory system. So similar to some of the previous lessons, here is the good news. There's really not much change for the respiratory system between T6 and T7. So the learning objectives are very, very similar. Now, the only thing I noticed that really kind of stood out to me is that in T7, one of the learning objectives is new. So this is about the role of respiratory system in gas exchange. Now, I don't want you to freak out, oh, is this something new that we have to learn? It's actually not, because this topic um, was covered in T6. So even though um, it's listed uh, as a new learning objective, it is really not new material. So we can all just relax and gonna look at this gas exchange more closely, kind of as a refresher. Now, before we talk about gas exchange, I just wanna point out something uh, that's very interesting. So in T7, there is a practice question on the anatomy of lungs and make sure you understand the right and the left, right? We're looking at the anatomical position. So on your left side, if you are looking at the screen, this is your left, right? But it's, uh, it will be the patient's right side, right? So imagine you're examining a patient. So this is going to be the right side. And then the other one, which is your right, is going to be the patient's left side. Okay, so make sure, you know, whenever we talk about the anatomical position, the left and right are going to be the opposite of the two sides for you. All right, now you need to know the number of lobes in each lung. So you can see for the right lung, there are three lobes, superior lobe, middle lobe, and inferior lobe. You don't need to know the specific names, just know that there are three lobes in the right lung, and you have two lobes in the left lung. So the left lung is going to be a little bit smaller than the right one, and that's because in this space called the mediastinum uh, is where the heart is located. More than half of the heart is on the left side, so it takes up a little bit of space. Um, so the left lung is slightly smaller than the right lung and also has fewer lobes than the right lung. Okay. So the practice question is uh, specifically about the number of lobes in each lung. All right, just, just want to point that out. All right, now we're gonna look at gas exchange. Um, again, this is not a new topic, right? Um, T6 did cover that, but since it's listed as a new learning goal, um, I just wanna kind of go over this to give you a little refresher. All right, talking about gas exchange, the two gases we're looking at are oxygen and carbon dioxide, right? Each lung contains a lot of those air sacs, right, called alveoli. And alveolus, this is uh, singular. So you're looking at one alveolus. Surrounding the alveolus, there are a lot of capillaries, right, tiny little blood vessels. So fresh air comes into your lungs, so that's going to be high in oxygen, right, and low in carbon dioxide. Now, in your blood, it's the opposite. Let me change the color. Let's do blue, because the blood is red, so I don't want to use a red color. The blood it just um, comes back from circulating through the tissues, right? So it's very high in carbon dioxide, but low in oxygen. Okay, so now you can see there's this concentration gradient, right? Which basically means that you have differential concentrations. Now, when you have um, the concentration gradient, then the molecules, including oxygen gas molecules, are going to diffuse. Okay? Right? So oxygen is going to diffuse from, higher, from a high concentration area to a lower concentration area, which means oxygen is going to diffuse into the capillaries. And then carbon dioxide is gonna do the opposite, right? It's going to diffuse from the high concentration area, which is in the blood, into the air sac, which is the lower concentration area. So this is carbon dioxide and this is oxygen. So this is basically pretty much the gas exchange at the lungs. Now, after going through uh, alveoli, now the blood is going to be high 
in oxygen and low in carbon dioxide, right? So that's going to be oxygenated blood. And what, let's look at the gas exchange at the tissue level. So you have some cells here. And these cells constantly perform metabolism, right? So they need oxygen to provide energy. So they consume oxygen and they produce carbon dioxide. So inside of the cells, it's going to be low in oxygen and high in carbon dioxide. Okay, all right. Now, uh, same thing, you're gonna have so, some capillaries, right, that go through the tissues and then they bring oxygen to the cells and they will take in carbon dioxide, right? Because carbon dioxide is going to diffuse from high, which there's H missing, to low. So this is carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide. And then the oxygen is gonna diffuse from blood to the cells. So oxygen going the other way. Okay, so this is gas exchange at the tissue. Here is a little quick note on diffusion because the, actually both study manuals mentioned this, but I don't think I covered this previously. So just wanna kind of give you a quick note on this. A lot of factors can affect the speed of diffusion or the rate of diffusion. The uh, larger the surface area, the more diffusion you're going to have, or the higher concentration gradient is, meaning the differential concentrations are more different, then you're gonna have more diffusion. Let me give you an example. So let's say we have two areas. This is area number one, area number two. Okay? Um, so let's say we're looking at the concentration of oxygen. Okay, so area one, let's say is 10 milligram per cubic meter. And area two is five milligram per cubic meter. Don't worry about the unit. If you don't recognize the unit, that's totally okay. Just look at the numbers, right? One, is, one area is 10 and the other area is a five. So that's two different numbers, right? So you have a concentration gradient. Area one is the high concentration area and then area two is the low concentration area. And oxygen is going to diffuse from high to low, right? From left to the right, okay? Now, um, I have a, another scenario where, uh, same thing, you have area one and area two. But in this case, area one has a concentration of 20. Area two has the same concentration as the previous scenario, which is five. So you can see now the concentrations are more different, right? Um, over here, the difference is five, but in the second scenario, the difference is 15. So this is a greater concentration gradient and that's gonna speed up diffusion. So in the second scenario, diffusion will go faster. Okay? So that's what means uh, in terms of how the rate of diffusion is proportional to concentration gradient. Okay. All right, now the rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the distance between the two solutions. Um, that could be two solutions or it could be two areas. Um, it doesn't matter because diffusion happens in liquid, in the air, uh, even in solid. So don't worry about what type of medium this is, but focus on the distance, right? It, the, the further the two areas are, then it takes longer for molecules to migrate, right? So that's going to slow down diffusion. So you're going to have a slower diffusion of molecules. Okay. All right. So just want to mention the factors affecting diffusion in case you see any questions on that. Okay. Practice question. Okay, now all the practice questions I have for this lesson are going to be about gas exchange. And that's because that's the new learning goal, right? So I wanna provide additional information on that particular topic. 
Okay, so this is the first question regarding gas exchange. So the question says, gas exchange in the lungs is due to which of the following concentration gradient? So in the lungs, you have a fresh air coming into alveoli, right? So alveoli has a high oxygen and low carbon dioxide. So oxygen is gonna come out of the alveoli going into the blood and carbon dioxide is gonna come out of blood going into alveoli. All right, so the correct answer is going to be lower carbon dioxide and higher oxygen in alveoli than in blood. So correct answer is B. Okay, next question. Okay, so this question is about gas exchange at the tissues. Cells perform metabolism, right? So they release a lot of carbon dioxide and they consume a lot of oxygen. So they are going to have lower oxygen concentration, but higher carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide concentration than in blood. So correct answer is A. Okay, question three. Okay, now um, I got this question from Oregon State Open Textbook for Anatomy and Physiology. The reason why I use this particular question from a different source is that for until now, we have used concentrations, right, to describe a diffusion of carbon dioxide and oxygen molecules. But I don't know if TIS is going to use a different term for um, gas exchange. And so you see here in question three, it talks about partial pressure, right? So I have the partial pressure definition over here. When we talk about gas molecule movement, often we use the term pressure, partial pressure, instead of concentrations to describe how molecules will move. So just think of a partial pressure the same as concentration, right? The higher the concentration is, the more molecules you have, so they weigh more, they exert higher pressure, right? So the partial pressure is very similar to concentration. So if you have an area with a higher partial pressure, like in this question, carbon dioxide has a partial pressure of 45 millimeter mercury. So this is the unit that we use to measure the pressure of a gas um, or pressure um, of a liquid, right? Really any kinds of pressure. So carbon dioxide pressure is 35 in the blood and 40 in alveoli. Carbon dioxide is going to move from a high partial pressure to an area with a lower partial, partial pressure, right? Same thing. Uh, you can, you know, switch partial pressure, partial pressure to concentration. So exactly the same thing. So in this case, carbon dioxide is going to move from blood, right, which has a higher pressure, to alveoli with a lower pressure. So when you see something like that, something about partial pressure of uh, carbon dioxide or oxygen, it's still about diffusion, still about gas exchange. So because of the concentration gradient or um, difference in partial pressure, carbon dioxide molecules will move, will diffuse. The molecules are going to diffuse from blood into the alveoli. So correct answer is D. All right, I think that's the last question. Good job, guys. I know this is a very short lesson, but that's good, right? That's, that means you don't have a lot of new material to study, which is great. All right, um, thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.